Hello, I'm Diogo de Cruz. I'm an artist from Lisbon based in Munich. And I'm here today to speak how I work about uh, sustainability in my practice. And the ecological thinking um, and the critic of ecology has been very present in my practice and different levels. So, and I will try through this presentation to show you how that has been present in my artistic practice has been present conceptually. So it's problem and the theme that really drives me to produce work and to think about certain solutions. And it has also been affecting the method of doing objects. How can I do objects, you know, in a more sustainable manner in a way, or how can I bring another object, another product almost in the world with a more conscious manner, in a more correct manner. And the third point is a bit like the aim or the almost like philosophical aim of, the, of a lot of works. It's to, to move people towards such causes. Um, about my practice in general, I work in sculptures, installations and films. And I like to look at places where Western knowledge hasn't still arrived as places they are mysterious and places where um, certain contemporary mythologies can emerge. And in this specific project that I would like to talk today, um, I'm looking into the depths of the ocean. So to think of the deep sea as a place that we know so little, as a place that made the most area of the planet. So it's a very I mean, most of the planet is constituted by this type of environment, even though uh, we don't know so much about it and we know more about out of the earth objects and phenomena than what happens down there. Yet it's still the origin of life. So we know that life on earth started in the depths of the ocean, and, but we don't know so much about it. And these depths of the ocean become a uh, a certain room, a certain place for me to imagine a fictional scenario. And a lot of it started when I got to learn about deep sea mining. So deep sea mining, it's a um, weird, very bizarre extraction project that is actually right now happening in certain areas of the world, still as a test, kind of a prospect of how deep sea mining could happen. But it, for me, portrays um, a lot of bizarre visions of this net extraction of natural resources. So the idea is that we, we Western society, let's say, for batteries and for what they like to call the green turn, we need a lot of precious metals. And these precious metals, rich metals, they have been very hard to get in land extraction. And there is the knowledge, I mean, there has been known already that in the depths of the ocean, there are these nodules of rich uh, minerals, uh, normally also um, close to hydrothermal vents, to volcanic uh, underwater activity. And the plan is, as the pictures show, to bring a robot down there who would suck in the complete seabed would send that to a boat to separate the metals and send back any sediments uh, left of this process. For me, it shows like an incredible um, bravery that humans could go to an environment that they know nothing about uh, and to extract what is there. I was also very impressed that a lot of these hydrothermal vents where these mineral activities want, I mean, or are supposed to happen, they are the places where scientists believe the first life on Earth started. You know, it's these places where exist these very weird bacteria who use the chemistry and the heat of volcanic activity to come to life. So then I kind of like became sure that I want to do a project that refers um, about um, these processes. At the same time, I was thinking a lot of what it means to extract from an ocean. You know, what is this body of water? Thinking, for example, of the Atlantic Ocean, which as a Portuguese, it's, it's a body of water that I have a very close relationship with. 
and to think of the memory of this ocean, you know, thinking of the history of colonialism uh, and the trade of enslaved people and understand what is in the depths of this ocean, you know. Um, so I started to, to work on a fiction inspired by this band as well that I spoke, Drexia, of a civilization that exists in the depths of the ocean. And then once humans started to extract the minerals from the deep uh, sea of, of the Atlantic Ocean, they started the conflict between these underwater species and the human species. I also like, while thinking how these species look like, I was not thinking so much of them as human-like figures, so not human mutants, but I was thinking more that they would be microorganisms. So organisms that actually exist, that actually make a big part of the biomass of, of the Earth, yet they are very, like, though they are almost invisible, I mean, they are invisible for our naked eye, they are very big um, bodies and very big mass of, of biological mass of the Earth. And then I started to look at diatoms. So diatoms are these very strange microalgae unicellular beings. They exist in all the water bodies, so in rivers, lakes, and the ocean. And it's impressive that they reproduce so much that in the ocean you could see even these microalgae um, from space. And the thing that I impressed me the most about them is how beautiful they are. So they they have all these different shapes that the scientists also can't really explain why they have so many different shapes. They have a very alien-like structure, you know, with very refined uh, perforations and also the cages or the, the cells membrane, it's made of silica. So they are kind of glass membranes what it was also very fascinating and i also thought like as a sculpture i work or i depart a lot from objects you know i saw a lot of sculptural inspiration when i look at these beings and to put this in practice i went to a place in um, north of portugal that is also kind of like proposing the production of art pieces with a very sustainable or ecological way so they, part of the industrial complex of the north of Portugal, um, they emerge these artisan residence that is called Nuentulho in the, in the rumble. So it's about using the trash of the industry of that area to produce art pieces. So I started, and already with this project in mind that I apply, I started to look at the trash that was left there and imagine how this trash could end up in the deeps of the ocean or in the coast just nearby the factories and could transform into sea beings and started to develop um, an aesthetic for, for these creatures and for the science fiction that I was, that I was starting to create. And um, so, so then this history started to emerge through the production of objects out of these uh, leftovers from the industry. Um, yeah, about this one, I would also like to speak because this one, I use one leftover metal sheet that was already roasting outside of the factory. Uh, and of course, I mean, I didn't cut it by hand, so it was a machine cutting it. But I draw it from one of these diatoms. So I try to look at one that I would like and could have a nice shape that I could represent um, that I could represent easily with a sculpture. And this was the one that I found. Uh, I really like this one as well because it lives in colonies and they live connected through these uh, through these threads. So I represented it um, as I was showing here, and the same pattern of the membrane holes I also did in the exhibition space. Maybe even represents this deep sea civilization. And I will show a little excerpt of that first episode, where the sculpture is very present. And when I do a very strong reference to deep sea mining. So in this piece of the film, I use found footage from MIT engineering, where they explained or they do a 3D model of how deep sea mining would happen. 
And at the same moment that these machines, this 3D animation is bringing the machines down, the sculpture that I've done that represents the civilization, they are kind of like coming, uh, they are re-emerging from the ocean. very specific part of the film that is has no dialogue and is really focused on this comparison of gypsy mining and the sculpture emerging. There is also some little details here that are quite interesting is that as I was looking in this factory, as I was producing my, my pieces, I was looking at the trash of the factory and all the shapes of the trash. And, and while I was producing this piece, for example, you know, I was cutting out with a, with a plasma laser this shape. And of course, you know, I produce also other pieces uh, out of the trash as this one that hangs on the wall. So um, these, these two pieces are actually leftovers of my own production. So I started to look at my own trash in a more aesthetic manner and thinking they are also symbols, you know, and all these, these traces that are left over from the production of objects. They also become very special. The, the history then continued in a very specific and very beautiful place that is the the Azores archipelago so then me and Fallon went on a residency to the Azores and brought this story of the deep sea mining encounter and this kind of conflict between humans and this uh, underwater civilization to the to a very specific space that is this group of islands that is part of, they are part of Portugal right in the middle of the Atlantic and here the film was really talking a lot about the process of colonizing these islands and what it means to colonize nature. Because as there was no indigenous population in this island, you know, people like to think that there is no colonization process. I mean, of course, first they had a very, and still have a very important geo geopolitical position in these islands. So of course there is a very, you know, colonialist thinking when, you know, having these colonies. But then also the idea of consuming completely and shifting completely the natural landscape of that island. And here again, as you see already with this frame, 
there is a sculpture that assumes kind of one of the main characters as well of the film. And here again, if I think of like ecological thinking, it's very interesting how how to think of producing um, a sculpture in an island um, so much far away from any other coast line. So even the festival team is very sensible about these facts. They had artists who wanted to work with clay and they had to import clay in the islands because as a volcanic island, there is no clay there. So I was very interested in producing a sculpture out of material that is already in the island and hopefully that is trash from the island. And I was lucky enough to find hundreds of these plates. So these plates, they are curved. They exist exactly like these in the metal trash of the island. It was also very interesting in such a beautiful green setting as the island of San Miguel to go for where all the trash of the island finishes and how they separate it and everything. But yeah, I found a lot, a lot of these uh, plates. So I started to, I mean, I, I got it from the from the trash, metal trash place and took it to the studio and started to understand how I could create a sculpture with them. And then the own festival, the own art institution who invited me, they also had their own trash a bit. So all these metal poles, they were leftovers from a uh, pavilion they built um, five years before. And they even had screws and a lot of material left over from this construction. So I kind of like took this material that I had as the material that I will use to make the sculpture. Uh, and installed it um, and it was there for along the summer in the two, three summer months and installed it right in the center of the capital of the island where a lot of people bath um, in this natural pool. And it was also a very nice way to, I mean, to relate to landscape but also to relate to people and to the public. Uh, what we also did was an underwater listening session. So we got a underwater speaker that is used for synchronized uh, gymnastics and synchronized swimming. And it was an idea also to, to, to bring people to a natural environment as the water, to a natural medium and experience what it is to listen under, under water. I have a little clip where the environmental question is so clear in the, in the film. So I would just by introducing it, you know, one of the things that impressed me the most about deep sea mining was how the how is the green technology who is being pushing and pursuing this idea of mining the deep sea you know so this idea that to make what they call a green turn to make green energy to make our standard of life sustainable we need just a bit more minerals you know so we need just to exploit a bit more the earth and just to exploit also this place that we know nothing about to be able to sustain our life. And this fact has been really giving me a lot to think about of like, what is that that we need to sustain? We you know which standard of living do we have to sustain? And how can somebody think of sustainable mining? You know, because that's a lot of that companies claim that they would you will use only these minerals only for this, this green technology. So in the film, I created the character that it works a bit as the villain that I ended up be, being played by me because I could not ask anyone to be playing that uh, character. And that character is representing this kind of like young entrepreneur who believes uh, that he's doing something good by extracting these minerals. And here in this scene, there is a conversation between that person and the biologist who was invited in the island, you know, to make a document which would allow the mining activities to happen. the islands. Is the report done? It's nearly finished. 
But why does he keep on delaying? You know, we needed to proceed. You know how much I needed to adapt. I understand you're still in this discomfort of working within the mining activities. But as we always say, strange times demand creative solutions. I've heard that before. Compromise. Precisely. And you've been following the program of our company. We are the first supplying minerals for green energy only. And if we are able to extract what the last figures predict, we are paving the way for, for the green turn, yes. Your hesitation worries me, I have to say. You know as well as I do how the markets are saturated. To achieve the ambition goal, which are far from sufficient, to at least get close to that goal, there is a need for raw materials. Many valuable metals are needed for green technology. And we are working towards that sustainable mining. Yet, somehow, you still don't consider any unexpected consequences, do you? As closing note, I will just speak about a bit of where the project is going and what perhaps is going to be my goal. Um, I'm showing footage that has no sound now. It's just things that I filmed uh, in Brazil. And there, you know, I'm continuing the this fiction that started from European, like the continent of Europe, went to the islands of the source and is now looking at the other side of the Atlantic. What I really want to explore and to say in general with these projects is to to understand how much of these projects of extracting natural resources, they are also connected with uh, colonial projects that are still ongoing. You know, the idea of, you know, going to a place normally far away from where these power structures are based and extract and commit these uh, environmental crimes that stay unseen. And what it also interested me a lot in my visit to Brazil and in my residence is to look at resistant movements that are teaching us a very different way to relate to the environment. So um, what we see now, it's an indigenous village of, um, a, it's an indigenous village that was reconquered by indigenous people. So. They are now in a place since five years that the government has given to them. Um, and yeah, and to look at how these knowledges and these ecologies that are produced in other places on the world, they should be perhaps at the center of our ecological thinking. You know? and, and if you think of the sustainability, we need to understand that we have to sustain all life on planet and not only our living standards. And it's something that I'm really trying to to explore. And let's say it's one of our my big aims in this project is to motivate people to 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 create these thought processes in their mind and to to understand how complex is the the concept of sustainability.